we had an update on Cloudflare data over the last 10 days. And so we want to share that with you as well today. And I, I cheekily titled, titled this section, you know, how to like a newly IPO in SaaS stock uh, by Cloudflare. And that's, you know, we, we saw that um, over the last five, six years, there's been a big bubble in late stage uh, equity investing, late stage pre-IPO equity investing. And the private zone got really, really inflated. And of course, as they come public, all the bankers want to be able to, to earn their stripes. And so they're showing amplification of those bubble valuations, or in some cases, they were, there was a multiple of those valuations. So we were getting like really like a lot of goppity goo. And it was it's just very, very hard in this enterprise software space to like anything. We really like Cloudflare. Of course, when we reviewed it, we did a deep dive. We reviewed it. The stock was being offered at 11, and then they walked it up to 13, and then the IPO was at 15, and now the stock's at 18. So it's it's obviously moved quite a lot in the last six months. So there are attendant risks. We still like it on a medium and long-term basis. Uh, slide 22 is kind of like just a bare bones outline of our thesis. Again, we presented this in September. We've had follow-up work. If you would like our work on this, if you're an institution and you would like our work on this category, please reach out to sales at hedgeye.com. But just going to the update from last week, if you look at slide 23, so Cloudflare is in the business of making the internet uh, safer, uh, more secure, and more performant for everyone, uh, not just uh, for large customers of Akamai or not just for large giant internet companies named Amazon and Google. This is literally the long tail of everybody on the internet can have better security and better performance using Cloudflare. This is the long tail of their business model. It's their mission statement. And for the most part, they've actually delivered. Um, they, As they continue to grow their number of data centers, um, their revenue follows on a lag because the wider that they get in terms of their network, their network is the barrier. And the more network that they have, the greater uh, the performance of their product. So that the better uh, they can do in terms of um, uh, in terms of providing value to their customers. And there is a tie to revenue and we show it here. So at the end of the year, we track uh, the full amount of data centers added for the year, as well as uh, ending the quarter. If you look at slide 24, this is an update also on um, Cloudflare's performance, and you can see it's pretty damn good in terms of latency. They are maybe the best, or the best in terms of uh, this uh, a pr this way of measuring, or this set of custom of of competitors, and in terms of uh, downtime or outages. They've had a lot of improvement over the years and their performance continues to improve in this category. If you look at slide 25, slide 25, um, Cloudflare uses a technology called reverse proxy, which means that when you access websites, so for example, if CNN uses Cloudflare, which I believe they do, um, when you go to CNN.com uh, or whatever page you like to go to, um, you don't actually uh, touch CNN's server. You touch a Cloudflare server because everything is uh, cached at a local server that's close to you, which helps you with performance, and it also helps CNN uh, with uh, DDoS protection and other security mitigation. And so in the, rever the reverse proxy category has been growing very rapidly, and Cloudflare has been the number one company providing technology or the one number one leader in the reverse proxy space. It's another position that we really, really like, a share gainer within a growing category. Um, and the right technology for today's internet. If you look at slide 26, we tried to translate that to what that means for Cloudflare revenue. Um, for Cloudflare revenue for Q4, um, all of this data is a little bit early or young in terms of how we can, because it's only come public recently, we only have like six months of good data on this stuff. So it's a little bit tricky to really apply it perfectly. Uh, to to revenue, but our best guess would put us about uh, just using the reverse proxy data puts us about three percent above street estimates for Q4 19 revenue. Um, if you look at the next data set we also track, which is internet properties on slide 27, you can see that the number of internet properties supported by Cloudflare had an acceleration uh, over the summertime and into the fall, and. In part, that's because of larger and larger customers coming on at Cloudflare. We think it hasn't translated to it, it, the the revenue per internet property uh, has sort of like temporarily sort of decoupled so far, meaning that that the revenue hasn't kept up with the acceleration in internet properties in the near term. I think there's a t big TBD here, and we'll see what happens over the next few quarters, where I think there actually could be an underlying acceleration, and so. 
what I've shown you so far is good data uh, and good data for Cloudflare. And we like the business model. We like the company on a lot of levels. We like their mission. But there's a lot of risks, and that's why I cheekily titled this category um, how to like a SaaS stock that's post IPO. This is on slide now moving to slide 28. Um, and I would say the biggest risk here is that um, the sell side came out all bullish. So again, we reviewed the stock in September. This was before anybody else. And we came out with a bull case. And I have to say the, the reason this is like not a um, an obvious long, um, there's hair. There's inexperienced management. There's a business model that isn't purely software. There's a mix of hardware and networking as well. It's sort of networking as a service that's migrating into computing as a service. So it's more like a comp to AWS rather than a comp to let's say Slack or any of the other, or Salesforce or Dropbox. It's really, well, Dropbox actually probably has some more elements that compared to this. So it's not an obvious long, but the entire sell side basically came out long. So there's no tension in the stock at all, um, thanks to people, I guess, not doing their work or no diversity of opinion, which sucks. Um, and really kind of like takes a little bit of the air out of the near term opportunity in terms of our data update being good. But then uh, the sell side all came out bullish with no work. I'm like, uh, what's that? What is, how does that help anybody? Um, you can read the other parts of this. Cloudflare did just complete its first acquisition since going public, a small acquisition, an 18 month old company, and they didn't buy revenue. They bought a new technology that actually is, is takes their technology and sends it even further forward into uh, the browser market so that let's, it enables you when you're at home and you're surfing the web and you host a brow host uh, a site instead of the site being on your computer with all of the attendant risks of cookies being dropped on your computer or malicious malware being dropped on your computer or spyware, whatever it is, um, this new technology that Cloudflare just bought, which is breakthrough technology uh, and unique, uh, would allow Cloudflare to host the site on their server so you don't actually have all of this risk running on your local machine. So. It just shows me that, again, on a medium to long-term basis, Cloudflare is going to be a good one. In the short term, I'm shrugging my shoulders that we've had, a, a, we've had a great run. It's expensive. There's no tension in the stock. The data updates are good, but are they putting me, it's putting me 3% above street. I still think there's an acceleration coming in the first half of 2020 that's based on the internet properties work, but without a longer term of duration of data, we don't have a perfect visibility to be able to say kind of exactly how that's going to play out.